Hey guys, it's 9.28, 6.31 a.m. precisely. I got this warning. Um, it's a little different than usual. It has a lot of things I need to break down and read. So um, f it is called warning and there are two parts. One is this is the end and the second is to my true church. So I took down all these words, then later went back to look at the Strong's meaning for the time. And I was shocked and amazed at how accurate and how very specific it was um, in a match. There's no possible way this could happen without the Holy Spirit involved. So strong 631 in the Hebrew is to tie, to bind, or to imprison. And I'm going to give you a foreshadowing that this relates to the first chunk of prophecy. Okay. And 631 Greek um, means to wipe oneself off. It's only used in Luke 10, 11. This is given in instructions to the 70 apostles that were sent out and they were told to shake off their sandals or essentially curse the city that does reject God's word. Okay. This relates exactly to the second part of the prophecy, but it's a little more personalized instead of relating to just a city. Now I'm going to read Luke 10, 10 to 12, just in case you have not read that in a while. So Luke 10, 10 to 12 but whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city, which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Also, I am the messenger. I am not the originator of this uh, message. And um, please try to take your uh, frustrations if you do not like the words out on someone else. That's my request. Okay, so number one, this is the end. I was dreaming and I saw people cowering in fear. And in the dream, one girl, I was kind of zoomed in and I had to focus on her. She um, was mid to late 20s she had blonde hair blue eyes she was very cute um she was very dirty and her face was in complete horror and at that moment i heard the most booming voice of god i've ever experienced now if you're a newbie and you don't remember or you don't know that i have died gone to heaven seen and talked with jesus and god and come back willfully which some days I wish I didn't, <laughs> but I did. <laughs> and I know the voice of God, okay? It's not like, oh, I hope this is the voice of God. I have seen and heard the voice of God in heaven. Therefore, when it speaks to me, I understand who I'm talking to and who I'm listening to, okay? So at that very moment, this booming voice of God at that second, I sat straight up in bed. I was freaked out. I was just like, whoa, what's going on? And at that very second, my husband also got a text on his phone, which is how I know how precisely the time was, okay? So this voice booms and it says, this is the end. And it was like, not happy. So then he said, you have heard, you mocked, you challenged, you knew better. You were warned, you still rebelled. Then I was shown a brief vision of the people hiding in fear. The same thing from my dream, but I was awake this time. And it was pitch black, just like that time that we've been told about right after the rapture when it's very scary, okay? Now, God's voice continued after this image in a very serious tone, but it was more similar to what I normally hear him say. It wasn't as thunderous, okay? Because the thunderous one, I seriously thought the entire house was awake. Like it was big, okay? So those in rebellion, be warned. This is not a game. Who is rebellious? Not to man, but to God. Who is rebellious? Anyone ruled by the unclean, recall that word, okay? It's coming back. Anyone ruled by the unclean. Then I was told to read you Romans 1, 16 to 2, 16. The just live by faith, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God 
to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. God's wrath on unrighteousness. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use for the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Chapter 2, God's Righteous Judgment. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are, who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man? You who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, and not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who, by patient continuance in doing good, seek for the glory, honor, and immortality. But those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greeks, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, and their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them, in the day 
when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Then the words continued, righteousness, only the righteous and the holy will be spared. To be righteous and holy, you must be sanctified. In order to be sanctified, you must first have chosen my son, Jesus Christ, as your propitiation for sin in full faith, and then have followed his commands. This requires reading his words and obeying them. This is non-negotiable. He and I are one. You cannot be sanctified unless you have been baptized and sealed by the Holy Spirit. And you must not grieve the Holy Spirit, but instead follow his guidance. These are non-negotiable. I, the Lord God Almighty, who speaks to whom I choose, I am graciously warning your generation. I tire of this wicked, willful, and unclean generation. Your days are numbered. In your lifetime, you rebellious, you will have a choice me and grace, or follow your own path and have judgment. This is the simple truth. You think these words are wrong. You wish to challenge. Read my words in the Bible. Where do I waver? You lazy, wicked generation of fools mocking the few pure left on the earth. I will have my vengeance. You will turn or know your choice was wrong. Seek out if I am true. Do not take man's word for it. Read my word. You stir your days with much reading and folly. You take in information all day. Yet, you have not had one hour to spend reading my words to authenticate. In your own wisdom, you decide you are right. Fools. I am all compassion and love and hope. I give mercy and grace and peace, but only to my own. Consider if you feel anger, animosity, or wish to cause discord against me or my true church. Consider that you are against me, which conversely means you are led by the evil one. Strongly consider your path. I give eternal abundant life. The evil one and all who follow him, the only end is eternal torture. Choose today. The end of the unrighteousness is near. In moments in my time, the day will be past. You will have pushed too far and rebelled too long, and you will receive my wrath. All who receive my wrath go to hell for 1,000 years, and then the lake of eternal fire for eternity. Wake up from your stupor. Stop. Think what you are doing. Think about your choices. Read my word. Read my son's words. There is no restart button. This is not a game. You do not get an extra life. Your soul is eternal and the choices you make now have eternal consequences. Stop. Think. Consider. You rebellious. I warn. Then I was told to read um, some verses to you at this point. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. The next one is Proverbs 6, 12 through 19. The wicked man. A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffles his feet. He points his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. 
Therefore his calamity shall come suddenly. Suddenly he shall be broken without remedy. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A lying look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift into running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. And then Revelation 21, 8. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Number two, to my true church, my loves, your righteousness and aim at Christ likeness are a joyful and refreshing sound. You are beautiful. You have my peace through the storms. You are my cherished jewels. My witnesses to the Lord share my love. I will bring you those appointed to your care. Continue on in your correct path reading of my word, worshiping and focusing on me, staying in my presence, praying and listening for me. You will encounter many things before the rapture. Some will be demonically possessed humans who are vile. Do not bother having conflict with them. They seek to gain a reaction. When they are horrible to you, forgive them and give their fate to me. Trust I will give them just recompense. Any who harm my little ones, even in aggressive talk, will be marked for consequence. You stand firm in love and focused on me. Do not look to the left or the right. This generation around you, most are too far gone. They will not turn. Prayer is your best weapon. Other things you will encounter will be fearful to see. Recall to acknowledge the fear and then stop and give it to me. Fear is of the evil one. My true church is not ruled by fear. My true church lives confidently knowing that I will protect and provide. Be diligent to wait. As I bring you these who need me and are ready to have help, do not waste your time on the wicked and unclean that see no need of me. They have gone to the evil one for counsel and guidance allow them their free will to choose poorly shake off your sandals and move on forgive them for their beast-like behaviors knowing they only manifest the traits of their leader it is obvious who rules a person by their words and attitude pray for them that their chains break and that they can surrender and that they hear and see the truth and then move on staying focused on me until they desire change there is not one thing you can do to help them but pray the ultimate path of each man rests in their one desire to pursue that path i will warn just before the rapture some will hear in turn some will need to experience the beginning of the great tribulation to hear some will only hear the voice of the evil one Take no responsibility for their actions. Keep your hands clean of them. Stay focused on what is good and right. Look forward to what is to come. Keep your gaze on me. Have hope. The best is yet to come. Then I was given these verses to um, share with you. 2 Timothy 1, 1 to 3, evil in the last days. But understand this. In the last days, terrible times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, without love of good, traitorous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the form of godliness but denying its power, turn away from such as these. Acts 5, 38 and 39. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. 
For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. Ephesians four twelve to 13 For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. 1 Peter 3.14 but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats nor be troubled. Colossians 4, 5 through 6, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Romans twelve eighteen. if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Exodus 14:14 14, 14, The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So, I hope that's encouraging and I'll see you next time.